Hi, and welcome to part four of this PowerShell SQL or SQL tutorial series. In the last few videos, we've seen how to do select statements, insert statements, updates, and deletes. Uh, but every time that we've done the connection through PowerShell, we've always used this integrated security equals true because we're just using our Windows account that is currently running PowerShell to execute it against the database. So today I'm going to be showing you guys how to use the SQL authentication method. So the first thing that we actually need to do um, before we can do anything in our PowerShell window is to first enable the SQL authentication and also create a SQL uh, user as well that we can use to authenticate. So let's open up our SQL Server Management Studio here. And we are already connected to our database here. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to right click on the database and um, on the database server. And then what we're going to want to do is click on properties. And then here there's going to be an option for security. And then in here, there's actually going to be a Windows authentication or SQL server and Windows authentication mode. You definitely want to have that SQL Server and Windows authentication mode if you plan on using SQL Server authentication, um, or if you don't have, or if you don't plan on using Windows authentication. Again, I would always recommend to stick to Windows authentication. It is definitely better for security purposes. Uh, but once you've selected the SQL Server and Windows authentication mode, just come down and you are going to click on OK down here, and we are going to click on OK. Basically, all it's telling us is it needs the database engine to restart. So the way to do that is we can right click on our database server here and click on restart. And then we are just going to confirm that we want to restart it. This takes just a few moments to actually do. Now, once it's restarted, all we need to do is we have our um, database server here under security and logins. We are going to right click on logins and click on new login here. And we are going to want to create a SQL server authentication login. And the login name, we are just going to uh, name it log ACC for log account. And for the password, I'm just going to put test1234 with a capital T. I am not going to enforce the password policy. And uh, what we're going to want to do is we could leave the default database as master. What I like to do is since each of these account are really only meant for one specific database, I'll just change the default database to logging. And then in the server roles, we are going to leave it as public because we don't want to give it too many, um, too much access. Um, cause if someone figures out the password and username to that account, they would be able to, um, perform actions on the database. Let's say if they were a sysadmin or security admin, they'd be able to create their own accounts. Uh, so we don't want to do that. We just want to keep it as public. The user mapping, we are going to want to make sure that we select our logging database. And what we are going to want to do is we're going to want to give it db underscore data reader and db underscore data writer. This is going to let the account read and write to the database. Now, another option that you could give it is db underscore owner. Again, the only thing with that is you wouldn't really want someone to compromise that account at that point because they would be able to perform more actions than just reading and writing to the database. They would be able to perform administrative actions on the specific database. Uh, so let's go ahead and securables. We are just going to leave it as that and status. We are just going to leave it as that as well. So we are just going to click on OK here and that account is actually created. So now if we come back to our PowerShell here and we go to our connection string, the only thing that we're going to want to do is take away the inter integrated security equals true. We're going to add user equals log ACC for log account and then a semicolon and then password. And we're going to make that equal to test one, two, three, four with a capital T. So this is also what I'm saying about the SQL accounts being a little bit less secure uh, because we have to put the password directly in the script. So you definitely wouldn't want to save this on your server because uh, if someone compromises your server, they would have access to the password. 
Now there are ways to actually put this password in securely via um, password vaults or CLI XML files. There are multiple ways of doing this. Um, I might do a video on how to bring in passwords securely in the future, um, but just know that this method is probably not very recommended. You're almost better off in a production environment to create an Active Directory user that will run the scripts that have access to the database with only the rights that it needs, and then to run that script in this task scheduler as that user. Um, this way you can use that integrated security equals true. Um, but besides that, this is how you would do it. So now if we go ahead and we just actually execute this here, we will actually see that we actually get all of our uh, items from the database. So that is perfect. Now, if you guys get any errors logging in uh, to the account, make sure that you've followed that first step of going into the properties of the database uh, engine and making sure that that SQL Server authentication mode is checked and you've restarted the server. And then the other common mistake is in the account, uh, you did not give it access to the actual database itself. Uh, so always make sure that you do all of those things. Uh, definitely feel free to comment down below if you guys have any questions related to this. Uh, this is going to be the last very simple video on PowerShell and SQL. In the next video, we are going to start building out our module. Uh, so it's going to be a little bit more project oriented. Uh, so basically what we're going to be doing is we're going to create our PowerShell module that we will be able to import into other projects afterwards to make connections to any database server, any database much easier, execute those select statements, execute those insert statements very easily to where we won't have to remember and type out like all these lines of code all the time uh, just to connect to a database. Uh, so that will be a lot easier for us. So be sure to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell to be notified when that next video comes out. And I will see you on the next video.